the main thing I, I'm observing because we've been on a few trips mm -hmm. um, is how well behaved the children are. Yeah, Gabriel. yeah. <laughs> Everyone's so calm and like very well spoken. Mm -hmm. Everyone's so friendly. It's been a pleasure, like you know, to see that contrast because when you're in London, people are a little bit busy and they forget the basics. You mm -hmm. know, and over here we've got more time to like think about treating people as we wish to be treated. Hello and welcome to the Me Man Show. We are coming to you from our studios in Riyadh, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And today we have with us a health and fitness coach coming to us all the way from the United Kingdom. We have Nigel Colland. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here while you're visiting the kingdom. Pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah? Yeah. So I've been over in... Saudi for the past eight or nine days. Yeah? How's yeah. it so far? Wow, it's so beautiful to see the culture. See, like, you know, people just more happy, more focused. And the main thing I, I'm observing, because we've been on a few trips, mm -hmm. um, is how well behaved the children are yeah? over here. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's so calm okay. and, like, very well spoken. Mm -hmm. Everyone's so friendly. It's been a pleasure, like, you know, to see that contrast, because when you're in London, people are a little bit busy and they forget the basics, you mm -hmm. know? And over here, we've got more time to, like, think about treating people as we wish to be treated. Yeah, I mean, I mean that, that's one thing I love about the, the, the kingdom is, is people go out of their way to welcome everybody. I mean, it's just part of the it's hospitality. Very, very warm here. Yeah? Yeah. So what brings you to Saudi, first of all? Well, to be honest, you know, starting the journey, um, I'm a fit, health and fitness coach in London, mm -hmm. um, and... Over this course of time, I've got quite close with training people from the Middle East. Okay. And it just happened by chance, specifically people from Saudi. So mm -hmm. I work in central London, uh, Baker Street. Okay. So obviously that draws people over for the shopping, you know, for the, there's plenty it's of activities. Street. Yeah, Baker mm -hmm. Street's very busy. Yeah, because it's just up the road from Oxford Street, which mm -hmm. is obviously, I'm sure everyone knows that for shopping and whatever else. Yeah. And yeah. Got some dicks from Oxford, you know, a couple of times when I was there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, with, in regards to the client, um, yeah, I, I was training one-to-one -one more so. But mm -hmm. it was getting to that point where I was scaling my time, you know. Right. And I can only spread myself as far as the hours go. Mm -hmm. So now, over the past couple of years, I've been really focused online. So the people that have come and seen me in London, we've carried on online. So actually, there's quite a majority of them from Saudi, Right. And so I, I thought, why not come in on a little visit? And I had one of my good friends, Ron, she invited us over, me and my father, mm -hmm. after catching up in London. And we actually had a, a wonderful time and said, why don't you come and try uh, Saudi? Come for a visit, you know, something okay. new. I was actually had a trip booked to go to Brazil with one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to start the, world, the, the year off like that, to be honest. I wanted to start off a bit more cleaner. Mm -hmm. And also, I brought my best friend over here with me, was my father. Yeah. And yeah, he um he only recently got a passport because actually he wasn't sort of uh yeah, he wasn't really traveling much and I wanted to take him out of his, his shell sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Get him out of his comfort zone a bit, right? Exactly, that's mm -hmm. what it's all about. And you know, within a few weeks he had his passport and then I was like, why not come to Saudi? And then we got that invitation and actually I told a few of my clients and they were like very warm about it. They said, "Well, we'd love to have you over here." come and spend some time with us and come to our homes. Even they have home gyms and making sure that they're doing the form right, you mm -hmm. know, making sure that they're following the plans and the, you know. And the curriculum you've given them, right? Yeah, exactly. So we've come over here and, and it's been wonderful so far. You know, I've got another week left mm -hmm. and inshallah in the future, maybe yeah. I'll make this my base. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're more than welcome to. Yeah. I mean, first of all, we'd like to say, hi, Ron. Thanks for bringing, um, you know, yeah. Ni <laughs> Nigel here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, since since you've been here, I mean, you're just, uh, you, you know, like, what, what did you experience about the Saudi culture and what similarities and differences have you noticed about <laughs> Saudi, you know, being in Saudi and being in the UK? Well, the contrast is like yin and yang, really, to be honest. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, I mean, the, the UK is a pretty cosmopolitan place. I mean, with a very diverse uh, yeah, set it of... it is. It is. But over local here, DNA. things are a lot calmer. You know, you just see the etiquette of people, to be honest. Yeah. Everyone's very well-mannered, very well-spoken. And when you go into these, like, public places, yeah, there's just a nice vibe, a nice, vibrant 
energy, which, mm -hmm. you know, in London, it's hustle and bustle. Nobody barge into you. Everyone here, you wouldn't dream of that. Everyone, mm. like, keeps a nice distance. Everyone's got etiquette. And that's what I've noticed. You know, bringing my father over here as well, and he wears this hat, the Peaky Blinder hat. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're getting looks like, well, they're not from here. But okay. then people are like, how are you doing? And yeah. everyone's been so nice. Like, there's been a few times me and my dad just walking around. You know, we, we landed... Um, late on the 28th so we sort of like got some rest and then we got out and about on the, on the 29th so we was obviously for New Year's we mm -hmm. ended up going to uh, Wonderworld and right. uh, we had a, a wonderful time there mm -hmm. and we, it was getting to that 12 Wonderland for Riyadh season right? Like yeah, yeah so Wonderworld I think it's called because there's I think there's, there's I think there's a winter Wonderland here as well yeah. as well as okay. in London alright um, yeah so then we seen in the New Year mm -hmm. um, and actually yeah, just like we was, it was in Times Square, I think it is, in the Boulevard area. Yeah, we got the cable car up yeah. there. Uh, and it was just like a different vibe. And the main thing is, no one's rowdy, no one's shouting. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there's no alcohol. Right. You know, and I feel like this is actually a beautiful thing because we're having fun and we're having fun and we're not ruining our own dopamine. You know, we're actually yeah. feeling the vibe with, rather than intoxicating ourselves and not remembering it and mm -hmm. feeling terrible the next day. So... Yeah, during that night, it was wonderful. We seen in the new year. The only problem was was getting home. Right. You know, so we had an Uber booked, mm -hmm. but he actually was six kilometers away, yeah. and then obviously it was gridlocked coming into that busy area, and we haven't got Scooby Doo. We're like walking around, like what are we gonna do here? I mean, my dad, like Pinky and Perky, walking around, <laughs> and uh, you know, we was asking people whatever, and the Uber was like telling us to cancel because it was unattainable. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what am I going to do then if we cancel that? I'm thinking about getting my dad home, you know, right. he's 63. So then all of a sudden we're walking around and we start, we end up speaking to these, these gentlemen, police officers, and mm -hmm. they were so friendly. We were talking because then, you know, it's a part of the, the night, isn't it? You know, you're getting home, but still mm -hmm. it's nice to be nice and to chat with people. And they were super friendly. And, you know, we told them the situation. They even called the Uber driver, the police officer did. And they were just two young gentlemen, and they were very, 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 um, very sweet actually. So they like, they actually offered to run us down a taxi. So then they were flagging taxis down. Actually, they had people in. Mm -hmm. They thought they were getting pulled over, but they were only trying to get us in a taxi. Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then we, you know, in the end, we got a taxi. After we had the pictures with them and stuff, we shared some pictures together. We airdropped because yeah. I didn't have a Saudi sim. I should have got one at the airport, but you mm -hmm. know. Don't do everything right. So you guys so, took some selfies together. Yeah, we actually got some <laughs> nice pictures, you know. We can right. share them with you. I'm sure they'll be made up to see them on, on, yeah. on, online. They might even recognize me. <laughs> well, we should, we, should, we should get them. We'll use them in post-production. Yeah. So then, you know, that was just friendly. You know, yeah. I'm not seeing the police officers in London and the UK aren't friendly, but still, it's just that, that vibe, mm -hmm. you know, and I really feel it, you know. All right. Yeah. Okay, and, and, and aside from, from that experience. Oh, so then after that, yeah, we went to... We've been on a few trips. We went to the end of the world. Mm -hmm. That was nice. Um, you know, it's, wow. I've just never seen anything like it, you know. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. was a small group, to be honest. Everyone was really friendly. Yeah. I mean, there's only a limited amount of people usually yeah, that go to the edge exactly, of the world. Exactly, because you can't go in a car. Yeah. You know, your car would be finished with all these boulders and stuff. So, yeah, mm -hmm. we went on a 4 by 4 And that was a wonderful day. And, yeah, what else did we do? We'd done a culture tour. That was just recently. Yeah. You know, we stayed in a few different accommodations. When we first arrived, we was in a hotel. Then we tried at Airbnb. But then we realized the traffic was an issue. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go to the gym, you, you'd be spending another hour. So we thought, well, we'll get back into a hotel or right. a gym with the right facilities. But getting back to the culture tour, that was, that was, that was probably one of the best days, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we went to Al Mazmak. Uh, the palace? The palace, yeah. yeah. And we seen all the history. I mean, one of the kings had 50 kids or something. I mm -hmm. mean, I thought that was a good effort, to be honest. And <laughs> actually, right. the, one of them is in power right now, mm -hmm. you know. And I feel that was just a beautiful story, knowing about all the, the culture, uh, you know, understanding the stories behind it all. Because, yeah. you know, Saudi Arabia's done this to, and it shrunk again, you know. Mm -hmm. And hearing the stories that you think he went back to Saudi with 66 men. I forget the names, I'm trying. Okay. And he actually overcome the, the kingdom again. And that's mm -hmm. when he started building it back. Yeah. So understanding all of this, and actually, you know, in London, because I'm, 
I'm a Sagittarius, I'm a bit of a seeker, I like to know the truth. And mm -hmm. one of my friends, the way I was talking, he says, you sound like a Muslim. Mm -hmm. So I started taking me to the mosque in uh, Regent's Park in London. Mm -hmm. And he actually got me a copy of the Quran, Mosab okay. his name is. And he put me on my path and actually, I mentioned this to Saud, who was doing the tour. And mm -hmm. to understand the amount of detail he was throwing at us with everything, I thought, wow. And he had these beautiful little kids, they were all like holding his leg and running around. And it's just a beautiful scene. And I just mentioned, I just dropped it in, you know, I, I was looking to convert some time. Yeah. He looked at me like this, and why don't we do it today? Mm -hmm. We're going to the mosque anyway. Mm -hmm. What's the name again? The uh, Rajhi Mosque. Yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful place. Okay. Massive, wonderful. And actually, yeah, I converted there with Abdul Aziz. Mm -hmm. And he was such a gentleman. He explained everything in detail. And actually, it brought out a lot of emotion in me, to be honest. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, to be involved in that was wonderful. Okay. And so now I'm a Muslim. All right. And, and started my journey. Okay. I mean, I mean, welcome to the club. We always yeah. welcome everybody. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and but what, what, what made you um, uh, basically say, yeah, this is, this is the path that I want to go on, convert to Islam? Well, it was only a few days ago. I've been having like lucid dreams since I've been here. I'm mm -hmm. not sure whether, I'm not too sure why, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it could be many things. Maybe it's just getting out of London, detoxing my body from all the pollution and maybe some alcohol. I don't know. But <laughs> but since then, yeah, I actually had a dream and I was actually helping a friend in my dream. And he, he was a Christian and I was putting him on his path. And then I sort of went the other way because I said, no, I've, I've got this book. Yeah. And then I remember waking up, I was dreaming about I didn't have a prayer mat. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, you know, I'm not Muslim. You know, I'm, I'm, I've thought about it. Mm -hmm. But so I thought it felt like a, a message. And that's what was so beautiful, to be honest. And after speaking to Saud, and I don't know, I just sparked some, like, I just felt the love. Yeah. You know, he grabbed me and he was just so made up that I said that. He mm -hmm. was shocked more than anything because, you know, it's, you know, maybe unexpected. He thought I was just a tourist and maybe I just wanted to see, see some sights. But no, I said, no, I've, I've read the book twice, mm -hmm. you know, and I've also audio booked it and I believe it. Yeah. So then he made it happen. And that was it, okay. you know? So, yeah, I think it's a beautiful moment and I can't wait to put all this practice and, you know, create new habits back in London because I've got to go back to that place where there's a lot of temptation and desire, you know? And mm -hmm. I feel, to be honest, you know, a lot of people are far from the truth these days and I feel like we've got to go look deeper inside because okay. people don't do the shadow work. People, mm. you know, you look... They go on satisfaction externally yeah. in their environment and what they're doing is they're just distracting themselves from mm. their inner feeling yeah. and until you break it down and understand yourself then that's when things come to light and that's when the path and people you start seeing the signs that god gives us mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah i mean i mean that's that's the that's the thing is uh, i always say that we're living in a very cosmetic kind of society nowadays. yeah one of my friends said it was like a plastic world that sometimes yeah. we live in yeah yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean that that I I hear that a lot my, my, myself. So I mean, most of your clientele. I mean, you have a lot of uh, Arabs uh, as 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 clients. As um, I mean, all around the world, but yeah. predominantly Arab. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know where it's just like we're drawn together, you know. And yeah. I think it's nice, you know. I've got some friends that, you know, in the gym specifically. And, you know, they're from the likes of Mecca and stuff. And mm -hmm. they feel like, they've always said, like, you know, I don't feel like you're a friend. I feel like, you know, you're like a brother. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe this is, the I'm um, 36 now. Yep. And now I've made that step. But I think it's been a lot of steps, okay. you know, that maybe I've not really been aware of. Because mm -hmm. you have to evolve with it, don't you? All right. And uh, what, what tips can, can, can you give us about uh, diets and lifestyle choices, especially that you have recently converted to Islam? Like, where do you see, like, you know, Islam as, you know, as a practicing Muslim and health and fitness? Okay. Where do they meet? Okay. Well, look, in the Quran, one of the best things that we can do mm -hmm. for our bodies is fast. Yeah. You know, I'm um, obviously with Ramadan, we do like a 40 day fast because what that does, if you can, because the problem is these days, it's not about looking good on the outside. It's about look, it's about feeling good and letting your body be the machine it's meant to be. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of these foods that are out there, GMOs, they've got hormones in yeah. and yeah, they're creating bad gut health. 
you mm-hmm. know, even parasites in the gut. It's a mm-hmm. big, big thing. I mean, there's not enough talking about it. But basically what fasting does, just as a coalition, like with obviously the Quran, because you do a 40-day fast once a year. Mm-hmm. So that actually regenerates your whole body. You know, when you fast in, your body reduces, uh, produces more growth hormone. Mm-hmm. And what you're also doing, you have good cells and bad cells in the body. They call them zombie cells. Okay. So one of the main benefits... Because a lot of the cancers start in, 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 in the, uh, the bowels, mm-hmm. you know? Because why? Because if we're eating these foods that are damaging it, and they're creating leaky gut, IBS, mm-hmm. irritable bowel sy- syndrome. So, yeah, if you can then start fasting, what the body does, it starts using the zombie cells as energy. Okay. So then now, yeah, because the body actually works more optimally when you're shocking it. So cold showers, mm-hmm. things like that, that's another subject. But in regards to the fasting... You're actually spiking all of your mechanisms to survive, mm-hmm. you know, and this is what's important because now anything that's not so good in the body, because when you're eating gl- glucose, high sugars, things like that, you're feeding all the bad cells. Mm-hmm. So if you want to actually be healthy, what ho- hopefully, inshallah, the doctors tell you to fast yeah. instead of giving you medication because mm-hmm. the medication is synthetic and all it is, it's a bit of a, you know, a conveyor belt, you know, mm-hmm. especially in the UK. I'm not sure how it all works out here. But you don't even ask you two questions about do you get sunlight, you know, do you eat green vegetables, do you eat this, do you sleep? Yeah. They say, here's some antibiotics on your bike. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. And unfortunately, I feel like the modern practitioners, especially in these Western worlds, are just dr- dr- drug dealers, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. And I feel like that's the problem. Because look, actually, you know, in the next uh, end of the month, we're launching a company where it's, it's disease, and, disease and illness prevention. Because mm-hmm. prevention's the cure, not plasters, you know. So getting down to the nitty gritty, yeah, health starts with inside the body. You know, it's all right looking good on the outside, but if you're looking trying to build muscle and your hormones are down and your test levels are down, you've got to struggle and you've mm-hmm. got to get frustrated. Yeah. Because you're not looking at the root cause and the doctors unfortunately aren't sharing that knowledge with you mm-hmm. because they don't know the knowledge because they've been taught mm-hmm. just to be, this, this prescription is good for that. There you go. Yeah. And unfortunately they're not, you know, giving you actual holistic information, mm-hmm. you know, which I feel is very important. Okay, and, and, and how are, how is what you do a remedy for for medication, basically? I mean, because, like, you people, you well, know, look, like you said, go to doctors if they're, I mean, you know, I don't know what the percentage of, but I'm sure it's majority of, you know, the UK people, example, suffer from depression. Mm-hmm. And what people don't know, the best antidote for depression is training. Mm-hmm. Because what even resistance training actually builds antidepressive mechanisms in the muscle. So actually, it defends the body. And obviously, if you're moving your body, you're feeling good. Why? Because it's releasing dopamine. Yeah. You're releasing your feel-good hormones. So straight away, you've got a spike, which they say that these drugs help you with that instead. No, they just suppress us more. Okay. You know, and fortunately, some of these countries, you know, getting into America, say... You know, these pain clinics, mm-hmm. they had people hooked on opium, basically. All right. Yeah, and they, they ruined towns and cities. Mm-hmm. But, you know, getting back to the depressive side, yeah, training is the best form. Like, doctors in the future, I hope, they say, look, if you're feeling down, go for a run, lift some yeah. weights, do that instead. And mm-hmm. then, if it's not working, we come back. So and then we can go see. for a 15-minute walk. <laughs> well, look, move right? your legs, get those 10,000 steps in. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think the main thing is, is also... In the modern day world, we're in that technology era. Mm-hmm. You know, this everybody's got an iPhone, everybody's on a laptop, and what's that doing? Everyone's internally rotated. So everyone's walking with the shoulders down, and unfortunately, yeah, nobody's doing anything to counteract that. Mm-hmm. And what do you do to counter- counteract that is resistance training. So okay. what you need to do is then bring your shoulders back, and that's with your rear delts, mm-hmm. you know, your rhomboids, your trapeze. That's just by doing basic movements. Yeah. Get the body moving. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's unlimited benefits from lifting weights and thanks god i'd done that from a young age because okay. actually before i got into this line of work i was an engineer you know i left home at 16 i got an apprenticeship um and i was working around the country i studied in birmingham uh, that was the practical side and the theory side was in leeds college mm-hmm. of technology and by the time i was 19 i was qualified and i was working on site nuclear power stations coal fired power stations refineries and yeah and that involved traveling for nine years with a South Korean company. 
Mm -hmm. And you know what? It, it was the best thing ever to leave the town I was in because, yeah, I was hanging around with people that were, you know, yeah, we've all got stories and stuff. And yeah, I mean, thankfully, yeah. you know, I, yeah, they weren't, they weren't on a good path. Mm -hmm. So the best thing that happened, and I thanks God, got me out of that town and put me on a good path where I was using my mind and actually picked the trade, not knowingly picking mm -hmm. the same trade as my granddad, but he passed away. Okay. So that's how mysterious God works, yeah. you know? So I spent nine years working on power stations and, and what the hobby that I liked, more so mm -hmm. than the boys that I worked with, they used to like hitting the pub, which is, you know, some of them may be middle-aged, they don't know about training, but I used to hit the gym. Mm -hmm. So instead of like getting the, the mirror or the daily whatever paper out, I'd yeah. be reading Men's Health. That's a magazine. I don't know if you have it here. Mm -hmm. but I mean, I know I, Men's Health. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, there's muscle fitness and all these mm -hmm. magazines. But I was always like, thanks God that I, I got into this, this path early. And that was my, that was my friend. So okay. I didn't need to hit the boozer. Mm -hmm. I was then going on to go train mm -hmm. and hit the gym and evolving slowly. And then I, I ended up in Nottingham working on a, uh, a power station now. The problem with the, the coal-fired power stations, they emit a lot of carbon. So we was building a catalyst converter, which they have in cars, onto the power station. So that was a three-year job. So I actually got quite, you know, being in the gym, mm -hmm. I was meeting people who are like-minded. So then they was, you know, in, you know, inviting me out, things like this. And I got pally with one friend and he said, you know, I've got this photographer, you should do a photo shoot, you should do a lot of diet. Mm -hmm. And I've never done that because okay. the training was just something I like to do. Mm -hmm. You know, was and actually it was a like, yeah. byproduct by just getting fit and healthy because mm -hmm. actually I had a manual job, you know, heavy lifting. I was a structural engineer. I was a stealer at the rigger by trade. Mm -hmm. So all these big heavy lifts, I'd be slinging it, you know, and once it comes in the crane into the power station, which is 160 foot up, mm -hmm. then I'd be, we'd be doing the, the plans where it actually goes inside the building. Okay. And somebody's building, like there's, there's this much space either side of something like a big valve or a big pipe. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going into loads of detail about that, but yeah, I needed to use my muscle because, yeah. you know, I started off at 11 stone. Some heavy equipment. <laughs> yeah, so then doing the, doing the, uh, yeah, doing the, uh, the sort of training and, and then doing the, f the photo shoot, I got really lean and I looked good. And the photographer was like, wow, you should do a show. Mm -hmm. So then I'd done a bodybuilding show whilst I was working 12 hour nights, mm -hmm. seven days a week on a power station at Fiddler's Ferry, they actually knocked down. Yeah, because you know they have expiry life some of these power stations you know mm -hmm. so then I got into the competing and when I come to the stage you know and, and mix them with the boys I was, was chatting like, what do you do I'm an engineer I'm like what do you do and 50% 60% were coaches personal trainers All right. so I went back you know because after nine years we got paid off by this company because I was looking I was a contractor but still because I was good at my job and I was likable thanks God I actually spent nine years with this company and we got and then I decided, you know, what else can I do? Yeah. So I actually went back with another com company and it's price work and it's super dangerous, but the money is amazing. Mm -hmm. But I thought, this isn't me. Like, what am I doing now? Yeah. So that's when I realized after doing the show, mm -hmm. I got into the coaching. The and then coaching. I was like, yeah, yeah. I yeah. ended up moving <clears throat> to London. I didn't know nobody. Mm -hmm. You know, I stayed on my friend's sofa for about a month yeah. until I got a place, you know, and I didn't realize actually personal training was sales mm -hmm. so now I was sort of you know I had the advertisement but mm -hmm. I had to you know convert because yeah. there's you know there's many PTs in the gym what makes me different you got a so then I had to sell yourself yes exactly but you know the skills that I acquired on the power stations you know you're working with people from all walks of life yeah so that was the you know the good thing so I evolved there and then getting into the the gym and then I realized I've just you know turned my my passion into my business. Okay. And that's what some, you know, I bet most people dream of. And yeah. I've been lucky enough to do that, which I'm very grateful for, you know? So yeah. now I'm making an impact on people mm -hmm. and, you know, I've got to that point where I've really went deep inside of what caused these issues? Why do people do this? Why, what motivates them? Mm -hmm. And it's all psychology. So I'm like a psychologist oh, now. So when career. you're on the, you're on the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you're on, you're on the gym session with the people, they're confiding in you, you know, okay. they're talking to you. And also, I know what motivates them. Mm -hmm. And these are pain points. Okay. If you hit on these pain points, you get them to move. Okay. Yeah, because we all have a, vi a vision, but why did we stop? People forget that. And what motivates them? You need mm -hmm. to dig deeper and deeper. So now, yeah, it's all, health starts within. It's all right looking good on the outside. Mm -hmm. 
But, you know, if you're trying to lose weight and, and, and get to a dream physique, mm-hmm. you have to look inside. Yeah, so you got to be healthy inside as well. Yeah, exactly. And this is the mechanisms, the gut health, you know, sleep, all of these things. There are, so, you've got to be even vitamin deficiencies, things like that. It's complex being. We're, we're, mm-hmm. I mean, there's nothing like the human machine. Yeah, I mean, it's the most sophisticated machine out there, right? Well, you can't mimic that. They're trying to do everything else. You know, <laughs> well, speaking of that, you, we, 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 um, we allocated some time for you to show us some training tips. So how about we, we set up the studio for that? Yeah, and, I'd love to. Do it. Let's do that. Okay. I'll be training you. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess I'll be your, your, your subject. Well, you said that you fell out of sync with the training. Yeah, and that'd of course. Be my, yeah. My, uh... Let's see if you can tap into my inner psyche. Well, I'd love to get you moving again. <laughs> All right, why not? Yeah. I'd love to. All right, let's go. All right, and now that we have set up our studio, um, Nigel, the floor is all yours. Yeah, I mean, look, if people aren't training, we just want to get people moving. You know, if I'm going to write a plan for somebody, I need to see that they're doing the basic stuff. And Mm -hmm. that basic stuff requires range of motion and mobility. So you can't just go, I can't just say, you know, let's go do a squat right now. Mm -hmm. No, because potentially... A lot of us are sitting down a lot with the work and understanding that, you know, yeah, we're not we're not really looking at the, yeah, you're the not flexibility sort enough. of stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So when you're sitting down a lot, mm-hmm. the thing is your hip flexors actually get shortened. So okay. if you're going to do a squat now, like mm-hmm. this, without opening up the hip flexors, you've got to hinge over a lot. Yeah. What does that do? Puts a lot of hinging uh, pressure on the lower back. Okay. So I'm going to show you some activa- activa- uh, activation stretches now. All right. And we do together, all right? Yeah, why So not? let's get down into the push-up position. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Okay, perfect. Now let's okay. bring one foot over. Uh, here, here we go. go. There we go. All right, let it. me just lift my... That's it. There we go. So just, that's it. Perfect. If you put that hand on the inside there. Okay. Inside. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the back knee on the floor. Okay. Back knee's on the so floor. So what you got to do, you got to breathe in first. Breathe in. Exhale, and as you're exhaling, you're going to be pushing your hip flex into the floor. So you're going to be feeling a stretch here. Mm-hmm. Probably done, on the- you know, I've actually done this in another episode. Yeah, <laughs> really? Yeah, well, we're little doing little. it again. Yeah. So then we're over here now, and then we're pushing on the hip flexor. So this mm-hmm. is increasing the range of motion. So mm-hmm. now let's put one side back, the other one now. Let's change, alternate. Okay. That's it, again. Okay. Sorry. Just a second. All no right. worries. No worries. And so you're going to, again, it's all about the breathing, all right? Super mm-hmm. important. The muscle and everything needs oxygen. So right. breathing in, exhale, I'm pushing down on the hip flexor and applying that pressure. Let's have a little look. Okay. So you're going to push down on the hip. Mm-hmm. So you're getting a stretch here, which obviously helps when you're slouching over. And plus the hip, the, the hinging over um, with the hip flexors through sitting down. All right. All right. So I'd usually do that five times either side, all right? Okay. Okay. But we'll get the point, yeah? yeah. Okay. So now one knee up. Mm-hmm. This is the next one. So you've opened these flexors up a bit now. Mm-hmm. So shift that knee back a little bit over there. Get so back. One, yeah, this like toe to me. Yeah, yeah. And then this toe here. Up right now. Okay. So about like leaning back or anything, keep this plane of motion mirroring mm-hmm. each other. So you got to breathe in and exhale and push that hip flexor now. And you got to feel a nice stretch all the way up here. Yeah. So if you guys are sitting down a lot, this is super important, all right? You're the loose as a goose. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Because look, it's super important. We don't get hurt when we're doing these exercises. Say mm-hmm. a squat or whatever, which we're going to do next. Mm-hmm. This is what we do beforehand. You know, you never go for a sprint without doing a warm up. Yeah. Like that. Okay. And stand up. Okay. Right. So now we're going to do a bodyweight squat. So okay. if I'm just going to show you how it would look without doing that, you'd be hinging over a lot like this. Mm-hmm. So this puts a lot of pressure on the lower back. Okay. So we need to be like this. Mm-hmm. So these ex- activation stretches just help us do that, okay? Mm-hmm. So hands on the chest now, All right. just come down, and let me see what this looks like. Coming down, imagine when you're coming down, you don't wanna be doing this. A lot of people do that. So mm-hmm. imagine you're holding a tennis ball underneath your chin and your chest, okay? okay. So as you come down, it's like you've got a rod on your back. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna hinge over naturally, you're gonna be looking sort of the bottom of uh, the carpet of the, right? Yeah. So coming down, breathing in, hinging over slightly, keeping the knees, hold on, and okay. the toes, there we go. Okay, back up now. That's not bad. Cool. Yeah. And again, one more time. Breathing in through the nose. Mm. Back up. You. What you want to do is push mm-hmm. your glutes back a little bit. It's like it's the biomechanics of the body. It's how it moves. Yeah. So you have to hinge over slightly. Coming down, let the hips go back a little bit. As All if right. you're sitting down on a chair. Like that. Chin down a little bit. Back up now. 
Okay, it's not bad. We can perfect it. Mm -hmm. We do that in the gym this week, though, yeah? Alright, no problem. Okay, hold that. Okay. On the hand, both mm -hmm. cup it together. Alright, I'll show you again. So it's about keeping that chest up. Mm -hmm. And slowly now, coming down, keep those knees out. Because the knees want to be in line with the toes, alright? Mm -hmm. So coming down slowly now. Breathe in, hips back, bum back. Okay, okay, back up slowly. Okay. That's it, good. Again, slowly down. Come in, breathing in, hips back, exhale, and again up. How's that feeling? Pretty good. Good. And there's no pressure in the lower back, yeah? Nah, nah. Lovely. Yet. Carry on. Slowly, let's do one more. Hinging the bum backwards a little bit, and up. Okay, cool. Yeah, so the good thing about working the legs, mm -hmm. it increases the testosterone in the body. So the bros that skip leg day, you're doing it all wrong. Yeah. Because if you want a big chest, you need to train these bad boys down here. Mm -hmm. And also, if you want to burn calories, this is like a small engine. This is like the Ford Focus, yeah? Yeah. But down here is the Ferrari. Okay. So this actually burns the most calories. Mm -hmm. So if you want to cut, create a calorie deficit, you need to work the bad boys down here, all right? Okay. So there's two points for the people that want to build and the people who want to lose. All yeah. Right? I'm getting excited. I can't even yeah. breathe. <laughs> I'm getting warmed up. Good, good. <laughs> all right. So look, that's, uh, that's one exercise for the lower body, uh -huh. you know? Uh, because at the end of the day, if you're looking to, to, to lose weight, you need to create a deficit. Mm -hmm. So you can do that by eating less food, but also your energy out. Yeah. So there's energy in, energy out. All okay. right. So, yeah. Let's go for a lunge now. Okay. So I'm going to show you two different lunges. One mm -hmm. lunge is where you're lunging forward, mm -hmm. you're coming down, and you're actually stretching the quad because the, the knee is going past the toe. Okay. So this predominantly hits the anterior chain, the quad. All right. All right? Okay, so let's so go down. Let's do right. one together. Right. That's okay. it. Coming down, keeping the knee in line with the toe, remember? All right. Just push that toe out slightly without touching the knee on the, on the floor and back. Come back. All right. Okay. Yeah. Good. Again, one more time. Breathing in, coming down, chest up. Let's have a look. And push back. Okay, good. All right. That's nice. Yeah. I mean, just do another one, another two on the other side because we All don't right. want to get. Wonky yeah. legs and stuff, you know? It's like that cartoon asterisk, right? Yeah. Where one guy's like buff and he's like skinny on one, yeah. one, one end, exactly. right? Exactly. Okay, so. Just for good measure. Let's just do again. So, like chest that. Up. And always keep the pressure on the heel, never on the toes. Push back now. Okay. That's it. That's it. Again, one more time. Coming down, breathing in. And psh, exhale. Psh. Yeah, it's like when you box. Psh. Yeah. It's the same with the muscle. Okay. All right. So now we're going to do some. We're going to do some posterior chain. So okay. we've done the anterior, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, you usually do like three sets of 15, three sets of 12, but you cycle your reps. Depends. Yeah. If you're going for a strength phase, you're going to do a little bit less. And you're going to hit the muscle a bit harder with the extra weight. But when you're doing volume, you want to go to a more medium weight because you're not going to get there otherwise. And okay. you want to be struggling like 12 to 13 reps. Say if you're going to 15, okay. you know, if it's too easy at the start, uh -huh. Yeah, you need to, it's about those, those barriers, you know, but you'll okay. get a feel for that. All so right. now if we can do so this, this, this will be our last one just because we're pressed for time. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, I mean, I'd love to be doing an hour with you on this all one right. now. Okay, let's do something. <laughs> all right. So what's, what's our go home exercise? Well, look, we've hit the lower body. We've talked about hip flexors because look, a lot of us are working from the office. Yeah. You know, we're sat down a lot regardless. Yeah. Majority. I'm lucky because I've done engineering and I'm stood up, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to hit. A little back exercise. What we're going to do, mm -hmm. imagine this tennis ball is still here. So we don't ever want to be hinging over with the chin up because it's unnatural for the back, the back and the neck. All yeah. right. We don't want to cause any extra issues. So we're just going to hinge over. I'm going to give you some dumbbells. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to check your form. So we're going to be hinging over. I'm just going to show you so we know. So hips back, hips right. back, chin down. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. No, you can do it so okay. that you can this see way. your posture. Yeah. All right. It's better. So that's it. Let's have a little look now. Hips up a bit. Drop those hip, lift your glutes up a little, right, and, and hinge over the chest more like this. All right? Okay. And what you're going to do with the dumbbells, mm -hmm. you're going to just bring those elbows in, but tuck them in. You don't want to go, yes. So then you're going to hit all your back muscles, rear delts, rhomboids. Okay. Chin down ever so slightly. All right. So like now. we're going skiing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> down, you're going down a ski slope. Okay. So again, let's hinge over. Mm -hmm. Chin down. Drop those arms. Drop the arms. That's it. Now, bring the elbows up to me now. Hold one. Okay, chin down, brother. Bit more, bit more. Right, breathing in. Coming down, coming down, breathe in. Exhale. And up, elbows in. Chin down again. That's it, it's all right. 
back down one more time. So now you're hitting all of this, it's gonna help. If you're instantly rotated and you're sat down in the office, you're gonna need a better, stronger posterior chain. So these exercises really help. Okay. So we really touch base quick, but yeah. That was good. Get that body moving. All right. And the biggest, one of the biggest thing is, okay. if you're just feeling a bit down, exercise is the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. Put those pills in a bin, come in the gym with me, and you'll all be right. all right. Okay. Sounds good, sounds good. And before we wrap up this interview, what do you want to tell everybody before we close well, our show? Just get your body moving. Health starts within. It's yeah. not how, about superficial outside. It's all about the engine. It's about the machine. Yeah. Get that working right. Everything's going to be a dream. Much love. All right. And just like Nigel said, this is the world's most sophisticated machine, the human body. Yeah, they can't mimic this. This is what God gives us. Let's go. <laughs> all right. See you later.